three shepherds follow the star which leads to the barn where Jesus Christ was born. At 6 o'clock, the sheep must be in the field. 5 o'clock will be even better, but we work at night till 10 or 11, and there is not enough time for the shepherd to get enough sleep. He does not have time to rest during the day. He may get maximum an hour. At lunch time, I bring the sheep back and let them have some rest under the shadow and cool down a bit. We bring them into the milking unit and we milk them until 1 or 1.30 p.m. People talk a lot about Bulgaria joining the EU. We cannot give up doing what we can do best. It's in our blood and we cannot give it up easily. We want to be one family with Europe. Nevertheless, we would need some help from the government, may that be subsidies or other kind of financial support. Because at the moment we are struggling on our own. They say the grass always looks greener in the neighbor's garden, and there is no place as green as Ireland. But is the life of an Irish shepherd different than the life of a Bulgarian one? My name is Angel Kabashki, and I am a veterinary surgeon. I've graduated in Stara Zagora, Bulgaria. I worked in a village in the Plovdiv region. The wind of the democratic changes blew me 3,000 kilometers away from Bulgaria. After a long search for a job, I am finally working in Ivanov's farm. This is my fifth year here. I am taking care of all duties around the ship, including the veterinary service. We have 350 sheep mothers. My name is uh, Ivan Ivanov. Um, I'm half Bulgarian. My father was Bulgarian. Uh, he came to this country in 1909 uh, <coughs> as part of a group of students introduced to Ireland to finish their education in uh, to finish their education here. The Omani uh, was the man that brought him over and he had an orphanage in Bulgaria which he had set up in, in 1903. My father studied agriculture and eventually <coughs> became a state manager for the Omani. And when Omani died in 1930, I think he died, <laughs> uh, he um, of course, the estates were broke up at that time. It was after, <coughs> and we uh, he eventually bought this farm after much searching, and the farm was developed reasonably well, I suppose. My working day is properly regulated. It begins at nine o'clock and finishes at six p.m. <coughs> This is an eight-hour working day. My duties vary in the different seasons of the year. At the moment, it's the busiest time of the year as we are in the midst of the lambing campaign. Lambs are being born every day and a veterinary assistant is needed more than ever. We have a very good rate of survival amongst the lambs. It's 1.7. This is above the average rate and is a sign of a job well done. When I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, my first job is to milk the sheep. This of course applies only for the summer season. The earlier we milk them, the earlier they'll go to the field. In the summer, the sheep cannot eat after 10 or 11 o'clock. It gets too hot and they do not look for food anymore. Instead, they start looking for a shadow. 
Почвам по-обратно. Слънцето да ме бие на ливан гърба, да ги бие ливан гърба. След като ги докарам тук, вкарваме ги в бокса вътре за дойне на прелката. Тук ме един, един и половина ние издойваме. Три и половина овчара почива обедвал малко по това един час. Овото яшката и лови на нова паща. И ги пасем вечерта до 8 и половина до 9. В 9 отите като се притерят в къщи, малко после адналин, вкарваме и 10, 10 и половина и дойваме. И тогава овчарът се притерят и сърпо се притерят. Лега вечеря, четирица сърпа, да не започва отново. 89-та година. Аз съм работил с овце. I have worked with sheep in 1989. At that time, everything was fine and the stock farming was very well developed. After 1989, everything fell into decay and the specialists became unemployed. You can see where I am now. If I have to compare the situation before and now, I have the feeling that at the moment nothing is properly regulated in Bulgaria. The number of the stock is not known. Nobody can tell exactly how big the stock farms are or how many of them have been vaccinated. Yet, this is my guess. I cannot blame anybody. Here, every single lamb or sheep has been marked. I can tell that because I keep the statistics in the farm. All the information is stored in a computer and the Ministry of Agriculture is regularly informed about the number of the stock. Alive and dead. We regularly report the numbers of the dead animals and the reason for their death. Се взима номера и се съобщава в компютър, но че това животно е умряло и диагнозата на смъртта. Angel is now doing most of the work as because I have too many miles on the clock now and uh, I've unfortunately had to slow down. Um, but um, other than that, it's during the recent lambing, like I was up some morning, some nights at night, sometimes in the morning early, sometimes in the evening late. But, um, I, I sort of fill in where if somebody else isn't there. And the Batangel is our mainstay at the moment with regard to sheep. And as, as he, has, he has great veterinary knowledge as well as he is a professional. I have a lot of new things in Ireland. I have learned many things in Ireland, in the farm here, especially from my employer, Mr. Ivan Ivanov. He is an amazing person, an excellent specialist. Although he has not graduated veterinary medicine, he has it within himself. Life and practice have taught him everything. I am learning from him constantly. And one day, if I go back home, I would use my knowledge there and would be glad to help and teach what I have learned. I would be happy to be of use for my country. As a shepherd, I've got my children involved in the farming business from early age. Initially, they were helping me with simple things, cleaning, running after the sheep, etc. I wanted to cradle them for the spirit of the shepherdship, but I did not have to push too hard. Farming was in their blood. They wanted to become shepherds like their father. Овци, опита съм го натрупал с помощта на баща ми. Everything I know about sheep breeding, I owe it to my father. I have learned many things from him, from the pasture to the most difficult, the lambing process. 
At the moment we do everything by ourselves, including some small veterinary medical procedures. I have been abroad, in the Czech Republic. I've worked in the circus. It was a temporary job. I spent about four months there. I saw many things. I went through a lot. And I've discovered that you don't have to live abroad in order to get a job. You can have a business in your home country too. So I decided to follow my father's steps, use his knowledge and competence and get on with the sheep breeding business by following the traditional methods of farming. The younger people now have been very well educated and they're not staying on farms, they're moving out into other businesses and the, the traditional shepherd. It's virtually impossible now to get, it's hard to get sheep she, shearers now even on contract. There are not enough young people taking it up because of the, there's too much money made in buildings or whatever laying blocks or something, you get people are earning seven, eight hundred thousand and they don't, they don't want to break their back shearing sheep or something like that. It's virtually impossible to get Irish people to work on farms now. Most of the farms now, the young people have, are working out, working on uh, other jobs. They're, they've got good educations and they're all working at other jobs more or less. And they're working maybe part-time weekends or whatever. And when the father decides to pack it in like that, we tend to that farm. There's hundreds, of, there's the amount of small farms are disappearing in Ireland now rapidly because the bigger price for land and anywhere near a town now you get sort of fabulous money to sell land or sell sites or whatever. And it's, it's, the whole thing is going to be turned inside out, I think, over the next 10 years. All the old traditions were disappearing. I am a My boss has 1500 decker land, which is enough for looking after 350 sheep. When you go into the sheep breeding business, you should know exactly how much land you need in order to be profitable. I can tell you that 10 sheep require 5 acre land. We do everything necessary to keep our stock healthy. I believe it's the same in Bulgaria. Although I don't know what exactly is the situation there since I've been away for 5 years. But there are other problems there, especially with the land. The sheep farmers there do not have their own land. They go through the meadows and other people's fields and this creates tension between the people. Although these sheep farmers do not have their own pastures, they do have adequate facilities for milking and refrigerating systems to preserve the milk. The production process follows the traditions passed from generation to generation. They're not heavily stocked with sheep in the Eastern Europe. Uh, the winters are severe and they weren't apparently encouraged greatly. 
Angel, uh, my Bulgarian shepherd, he worked with sheep in Bulgaria before he came here uh, under the communist system, and it wasn't, they didn't overproduce sheep, you know. So I don't think that on the sheep field uh, front that we were actually suffering much from Eastern Europe, but in other fields, I suppose, maybe in uh, definitely in, in, in with chicken or beef or something like that. It's possible that there could be competition, but... I think that Bulgaria's joining the EU would bring a positive change into all areas, including the sheep breeding business. This would mean that our products have to be competitive and up to the requirements of the export market. I am talking about the milk, the cheese, the meat. And I think it's for a better change. We all should feel like being a part of a big family. And when people from other countries come over here, they should be comfortable buying products from our shops and vice versa. We should be comfortable buying from theirs. The standard and the quality of the products should be the same everywhere. I salute the democracy. It gave us the chance to grow and show what we are capable of and what we can do. When Bulgaria joins the EU, some farms probably will survive. Mainly those who will receive some support from the government will survive. But most of them, I don't see a big change coming up. But whether they're coming to the end of the flush time, that's the question now with the EU, the thing is changing and the expansion of the EU. Uh, it looks like farmers are on a downturn, for a time at least. Uh, other countries producing stuff into the EU, like in especially in the case of beef, coming from like Brazil, Argentine, wherever. And um, it's definitely having a downward on, on, on the trade. And it's having an... Uh, the tradi traditional farm worker is, is disappearing, virtually, uh, on the east coast of Ireland anyhow. It, Nearly, nearly, there's hardly a farm of any size working here now that hasn't got foreign workers on. I appreciate the good work organization and my employer's attitude towards me. As a matter of fact, the whole society in Ireland is very friendly towards the foreigners living and working in Ireland. I guess when we join the EU, they will pay us more attention. We'll provide them with milk and milk products, they'll be happy and we, well paid. And we'll live happily ever after. I'll be very happy when Bulgaria joins the EU in 2007. This is the right path. And then it would be good if the stock breeding, be the sheep, cattle or birds, become prioritized. Bulgaria has a good potential for agriculture and we should concentrate on that. Agriculture is the only thing we can count on. Take Ireland, for example. It is also an agriculture country, and the people here have a very good standard of living and a better quality of life. Well, apparently, from an, what Angel tells me, the most profitable item in Bulgarian uh, agriculture is, is sheep. They're getting almost the same, as much price as we are for them, and if that's the case, then they're making money, because their cost is so low. Embarrassed hours. The costs in Ireland are all going up and up and up. 
With time, things will settle down. It takes time. Unfortunately, meanwhile, our life passes by. We used to have a very well-developed stock breeding. We were on the right path. Maybe it needed some small changes, some adjustments, but not a total destruction. Our cooperatives, the buildings, the funds, everything was very well organized. And that was not only the case of the stock farming. The other sectors were also doing very well. But it was the agriculture that suffered most of all. And the specialists were left without a job. And now most of them went abroad. Nevertheless, I am happy. I am happy with my life in Ireland. In Ireland or Bulgaria, one thing is for sure, we cannot stop the changes. Changes take time and the new beginning is never easy. But maybe if next to the new trends we leave some room for tradition, the transition would be less painful. One thing is for sure, the shepherds from both ends of Europe expect and hope for a better future. I think that it's not going to be easy. After all, this is a new beginning and it takes a lot of capital. It is the government, I think, that has to take some of the burden and assist the young entrepreneurs and small businesses in the area of the stock breeding. Every beginning needs help. The three shepherds follow the star, which shows them the way to the barn where Jesus Christ was born. There, the three shepherds discovered about the birth of Jesus Christ. It was the three shepherds. Thank you.